session. Uh, we've called to order and pledge of allegiance. Please rise. Okay, should, should I think get the comment on the closed session? Yeah? I pledge allegiance to the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 It's, it's on the agenda. Thank you. I can um, comment on the, the closed session. Um, we have a motion to approve the agenda. Do I have a second? A second? When will I get to speak on that? Thank you. All in favor to approve the agenda? Okay, if you're going to ignore the agenda, I'm going to just speak over you because uh, uh, I, this is my right to come to a community meeting to address the, the government, okay? Uh, so, uh, here's what I'd like to say. And if this is disruptive, I guess it is, but I do believe I'm within my rights. Um, so you, you met in closed session, and I just, could you, I, I don't mean to be rude, but you're, you're just basically not recognizing me, Isabella. Isabella, I, I'm asking you to follow the agenda, follow the rules. Are you going to follow the rules? Are you going to follow the rules? It's right there in the agenda. What is the first item in the agenda? Would someone here follow the agenda and follow the rules? I, I'm going to just continue talking, and it, it is disruptive. I understand that, but I am going to. I, you do what you need to do. To speak about the closed session. Before closed session. Before closed session, not after closed session. Okay. I'm going to just say it. No, come on. I, I'm just going to say what I'm going to say because you guys have been fooling around with this uh, Miller uh, uh, lawsuit. I don't know how much in legal fees that you paid, but I want to point out the fact that uh, they were willing on almost day one to settle for 50% of cost. Now you've spent all this time with lawyers' fees and whatever else, time, Eric's time, and I'm sure at the end of the day, someone's going to be paying all these legal fees for both sides, and there's going to be some kind of settlement reached. I would urge you to not only be prudent with the, the taxpayer's money, but, all, but, but also do the right thing. These are 90-year-old uh, couple. I, hopefully they're still surviving. They're at the end of their life. They've lived here for 50-odd uh, years. And you have a responsibility as stewards, good stewards of our community, to take care of business. This is not, I, 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 don't, I cannot believe you're, you're on this legal adventure. That's all I have to say. Was that so painful? It was. Well, good. <laughs> Be rude all you want. Okay. I have an MPG. Moving on to item F, which is public comment open time uh, for items not on the agenda. Would anybody like to speak? Stephen? Yes. So, um, yeah, so uh, I. People can change, and uh, when I was in college many years ago at the University of Massachusetts, which has a leading um, engineering school, I used to weigh 138 pounds, I used to do yoga every morning, and I used to run seven miles a day through the countryside. So I proved that people, people can change. Some for the good, some for the best, worse. But anyhow, um, we all change. Uh, I left thousands of footprints in the snow and the mud in the uh, countryside of uh, University of Massachusetts, but those footprints have washed away. That's the, the stuff of life. One of the places I used to run by was this new building that was built. Uh, it was a power generation plant up at the top of the hill. 
in, uh, right outside campus. And someone had the brilliant idea, one of the brilliant engineers, uh, to transfer steam up the hill uh, to and to redistribute it through campus, it was to create greater efficiency and cost savings. They built the plant, and on day one, they turned it on, and it didn't work. What the hell? What, what, what went wrong? They went back to the calculations. Well, as any high school student could tell you, steam rises, doesn't go downhill so well. It was a colossal failure based on the most sim simple principles of, of thermodynamics. And uh, I'm telling you this story not because of my footprints in the snow, but because of your footprints, the footprints that you leave behind this community. We've raised objections to the Marinwood Maintenance Facility Project because of technical considerations, uh, the, the space that is trying to be worked will not work with the size of the vehicles, the, the, the equipment needed. You just don't have that room. I asked you last month to go out there and back up and try moving the trailer. Just test the, what we've told you. And I don't believe that has happened. The University of Massachusetts, uh, recent, they mothballed that plant. They never opened that plant. It stood for 30 years. They kept the coal fire plant burning for many years, polluting. It was a uh, hazard uh, identified in the 70s by the EPA. They replaced it for, with a $155 million state-of-the-art uh, facility, and no one admitted to the mistake. This is your footprints in the snow. This is your legacy. We are up against pension issues, OPEB issues. There's lots of reasons why a different approach should be taken. There's certainly the environmental issues and, of course, the stewardship of our park. Our park is for the people, for recreation, for use, for nature preservation. It's not really to store vehicles. That, those are service vehicles in service of its, the mission of the park. I ask you to humbly rethink this project. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Stephen. Um, item G is district matters. Uh, potential board of directors outreach communication strategies and initiatives for communicating and engaging with district residents. Um, Jeff, I believe that was your idea, would you like to read it? Actually, it was originally your idea, but I picked up on it. So, anyway, <laughs> when Isabella um, presented her um, idea about a strategic plan and this and that, one of the things that resonated with me, at least, was the uh, potential for um, increased community um, engagement and communication. So, um, <clears throat> I started working on, or trying to figure out what those avenues might be, and I came up with a few of them, and Sivan was kind enough to meet with me the other night and toss around some ideas. Um, so I'm gonna first just state what prompted me to think about this, and that is, um, <clears throat> since, golly, I think I'm in my 27th year of working for this uh, um, district, um, in years past, my first paycheck's in my house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get that same raise, aren't I? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, back um, in years past, when uh, we would have board meetings, we we generally profited from um, abundantly increased attendance than we enjoy today. So, for the past five years, or I guess we're entering the fifth year here shortly, that I've been sitting on the board, this is pretty much how our meetings go. We have empty seats and one, maybe two folks um, that are attending. And that's about the extent of the, in, um, the input that we're getting. And very clearly, um, in the very few questions that I've received um, during my tenure, 
Um, it's fairly clear that we have some work to do to adequately exp explain our scope, our um, charter, our strategy, and our priorities. So um, that's what really made me think about this, and um, I'm going to present a couple of, um, actually five channels that Savannah and I discussed the other night. Some of them are active, some of them are pretty passive. And I just wanted some feedback from the remaining members of the board as to whether you think any of these have merit to pursue. Okay? So, um, while I discuss this, please keep that in mind. Is this something you'd be interested in pursuing? If you think it's a waste of time, that kind of thing. Um, certainly, um, I'm looking forward to that feedback one way or the other. Um, <clears throat> okay. I'm going to start off with the passive. I, I hope not to take too much time on this, but so I'll, I'll move through it as quickly as possible. But I'm not going to tell you what my thoughts are. I'm interested in yours. Um, the three passive channels that um, we spoke about are an e-suggestion box, i.e. something, an electric suggestion box, um, social media or use of social media, and a board-prepared newsletter. Um, <clears throat> for all intents and purposes, I, I, can, I can identify a number of um, positive things about um, any of these, but also some negative things about them. Um, certainly, if we're going to pursue any of this, uh, any of these three um, options, we have to make absolutely sure that in no way, shape, or form are we violating any Brown Act requirements or anything like that in use of electronic media. Um, we are certainly um, have been um, advised not to engage in discussion on social media as a board or individually as members of the board. So there are a lot of considerations about any of those things. Um, the ideas about social media were primarily around if there was an issue that we wanted feedback from the community and we weren't getting it, perhaps we could put a poll out on social media and, you know, get some sort of response in that regard. The newsletter, um, you know, again, a lot of, I think the last time we, the board, actually it was me, but um, working for the board, um, sent out something that we would call a newsletter. Uh, was in 2011 when we had to replace the funding we lost from San Rafael um, moving away from our JPA and asked the taxpayers for more money. And we sent out three mailers and then we eventually had a rather large uh, community meeting to um, basically face that and get some feedback from the community. So Oftentimes, a newsletter would be something that we would do if we had something like that to discuss and we wanted to make sure that the public was aware. Can I make a comment? We were thinking maybe the newsletter would go into the Northern Wood Review so that along with whatever was being offered, there would be information about what the board was and when the meetings are. So that, yeah. that would be a way to reach out. Sorry. And I did get some, I did pose some of our comments. Um, to staff earlier, mm -hmm. and one of the things that I was um, made aware of is the direction that the review is going in is frankly more of a brochure than it is a you know a magazine mm -hmm. these days. And also, um, there are some technicalities about publishing that document that I was completely unaware of, um, having to divide pages by eight or something like that <laughs> in order to get it published properly. So. You know, there are other ways to get that newsletter out, okay. and, and that might not be the best place for us to do it. Oh, okay. But, you know, yeah, that's where you and I left it the other night. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, so, <laughs> anyway, so those are the, the three ideas. Naturally, uh, I'll just do the e-suggestion box. Um, we have to make sure that, they're, um, that if we set up a, a special account for people to write concerns or information or questions to the board that's a separate and distinct email box and that there is no way that we will be all looking at that, i.e. having a, some sort of serial meeting or whatever, we'll have to figure out a process and how to use that and, um, you know, there are those things to think about. Okay, I'm going to move on to the more face-to-face -face. and the two things that we came up with or that we discussed are 
um, what I would call board member hours, and that is where um, one or at most two board members would sit at a table in a public place where people are coming for a reason. I think this has been done at least once before. Um, and make ourselves available to our community. So if they have questions or concerns, want to bring issues to us, they can do that. It's not a, f a quorum, so we can't make any decisions, but we can certainly listen, we can certainly discuss. Um, that's one place. Um, some ideas. The Marinewood Market, I think that's been done for. Music in the Park, Raise a Glass event, the Beer Fest, the Lion Club Auto Show. There's lots of venues where we get a lot of our community in a particular place, granted for a different reason than to talk to us, but it's an opportunity, okay? The second thing, and it's been brought up before, is a community meeting. Um, community meetings have happened in the past, but almost always they've happened when there's some sort of huge issue. I'll bring up a couple. The Fire JPA, 2011, the leash law. The shed, you know, where there's something where it gets people riled up. Now, um, at this point in time, that project is in the hands of the county, so that's not likely what we would be having such a meeting for, and I don't think that would be something that we would even be considering until sometime in the spring. But, um, and hopefully we'll be a lot further along understanding where we are with that project by that time. But that is also an alternative, and it has its own, you know, positive things, it has its own risks, okay? But it does offer the board an opportunity to reach out to the community, um, help them understand the scope of what we do, <clears throat> why we're doing it, what we don't do, because we're, you know, it's not in our span of authority, and also to listen and get feedback from the community, which is something I think that, you know, we could use. And that's about the extent of what I'd like to say. So I'm looking for feedback and um, fire away. I like the idea of the board member hours. That has been done, and I believe we had a supervisor with our district at one time that used to have meetings at people's houses hmm. who would come over, things like that. That can be done also, I think. Hmm. You know, like a coffee morning or like the Marinwood Market, I know several times people have been out there at a table and sitting, meeting people and things. I think that's where uh, the people for that new development for the uh, thing, mm -hmm. that's where they met me was down at Marinwood Market. And that's a good thing because everybody stops there periods of time in the morning, mm -hmm. late afternoon, same thing. People mm -hmm. are in and out of that place all the time. Mm -hmm. um, the social media, I don't... Mm, mm. Well, I, was, I was thinking I, like, like Instagram and Facebook, you know how they can't actually post things, so more of a, another way of getting out or having a commission meeting, a fire commission well, meeting, I, a parks and rec meeting, a board meeting. I think we like do that all the time, and I think that's one of the things that Eric posts on next door every single week before we have a meeting here. And this, I consider this a community meeting. Mm -hmm. it's, it's supposed to be a community meeting. Mm -hmm. People, our community is Stephen. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, for today, I mean, yeah. and, and, and everybody on the other side of the camera. <laughs> well, because like, I'm, I'm not on next door. I have chosen to not get on next door, but I do follow Marinwood TSD on Instagram. Right. So I was just thinking, like, the parents and stuff look that have their kids at camp here right. or after school programs. Periodically, we'll look at the photos to see, like, because we post things about like what the kids are doing. So maybe that would be like another way okay. of getting parents who don't Granted, go on I think that's a good next thing. door. Anytime but you can get information. Yeah. We have post any usage of yeah. information. It's more just like a posting without. Yeah, the older people are Facebook, the younger ones are Instagram. Certainly, Bill, another thing that you know we discussed is the fact that um, 7 or 7.30 on a weekday night when people are working and commuting and this and that and the other thing might not be the best time to hold such a meeting. You know, maybe, uh, maybe. Maybe. 
a weekend or something like that when people would have more availability if there was something of interest to do, you know. Um, you can't have it during the day. No. So, I mean, you know, just a consideration. Yeah. Well, I, it's all good suggestions. I, I'm not sure about the board prepared newsletter. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that would be only as a, you know, if we had something yeah. meaty to say. And that's, that's only what, yeah, if we had only. something. Only. Yes, yeah. not. Not periodic or anything. Yeah, because like I mean it's a rare occasion. I mean the next election cycle I think is <clears throat> coming towards that end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I don't see a whole lot on the horizon until we get the shed out of the county. There's that. There's LAFCO. Mm -hmm. And what's going on there? Um, that would determine there, with the fire department. There could yeah. be some construction stuff. I mean, there could be things that will impact, yeah. you know, our community that we could send out, but only if we need to, not just to right. say we're doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Well, I, I think it's great. Thank you. Anything else? I've kind of talked about it. I don't know that I have anything else to add. I think they're all good suggestions, and it's more a matter of focusing on what's useful. Mm -hmm. I think you know at the time. Okay. All right. I um, agree with the subdivision between passive and more interactive exchange. Mm -hmm. um, and whereas the passive communication uh, lends itself very well to, <clears throat> like you said, a meaty issue where, um, let's say, you know, the greater public has to be. Um, uh, make privy to a lot of detail and, and substantive information that needs time digesting, etc. A newsletter is a, is a great vehicle and mm -hmm. I think we should definitely use that, not necessarily uh, on a regular basis, but as those issues arise. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I would stay away from social media, um, um, A, because of Brown Act, mm -hmm. and B, because um, um, issues that social media doesn't lend itself to an exchange unless you are already like-minded um, and okay. so if you are generating support for your cause maybe a social media effort might be um, a good vehicle if you want to discuss and brainstorm and, and take advantage of different points of view, social media is, in my opinion, not the best vehicle. And that's not what I would ever no. suggest. And I think they are all I think that yeah. I was more of an announcement. Yeah. yeah, and I think Eric is doing a very good job on post, of posting yeah. the announcements on Nextdoor. Um, on um, you know the website is there. I mean, how come so many other organizations are using their website effectively? And you know, it's because you need to be active, proactively go to the website and seek information, and that's something that our residents are not in the habit of doing. Um, a suggestion box, I believe, is very kind of old-fashioned and, and passive and, and very time-consuming and I don't necessarily think it's the best interaction. I am very excited and would love to have more people in the community um, come in and share ideas and engage in a dialogue and, and learn because um, I venture to say that the majority of our residents don't know much about the CSD at all. Um, they, I sometimes get questions about what is Marine with CSD? Is that the community center? Oh, is that the programs in preschool and camps? That's about it. So I would love to get more dialogue going and that's why the face-to-face -face meetings would be a good idea. However, it will be you know, a sacrifice on our part because you know, at least one, if not two of us, will have to sit down for a couple of hours and, and make ourselves available. And yeah, but we'll be on overtime. Uh, we, we will be paid a time and a half, uh, which um, of zero is still zero. Um, but, and another thing is, uh, 
you know, it will be difficult for us, for example, for myself, two kids, overscheduled after school, blah, blah, blah. Um, fine, I commit it to the board, I will make it a priority. Will our residents find the time and determination to say, okay, today I'm not going to drive my kids to his swim practice, today I'm going to go and talk to my elected official? Yeah. Uh, question mark. But again, because we we want to make the effort, we want to show the willingness, I'm down for it and I'll make it a priority. Um, and um, I do think that even though um, inconvenient because people come to an event for a different purpose, a table at a, any event would be an easy way to engage the public even if just implanting a hook and saying, hi, we're here come by, contact us. We don't have to engage in a, in a deep conversation right now, but this is my face, you elected me, I'm honored to serve, and um, this is what's on our plate nowadays. <coughs> you know, again, um, I would be open definitely to the in-person exchanges, and um, I also agree with, I agree with Bill who said this, this is a community meeting. This is not, our, we don't do it for fun, we don't do it for Steven, we do it for everybody mm -hmm. out there and everybody is always invited. The fact that nobody comes is really it's sad. <laughs> yep, okay. That's fine. Okay. Thank you all, appreciate it. I have some... Can I just add a couple of <clears throat> thoughts? Sure. Um, in no particular order in terms of like a social media presence for the board, I would suggest creating separate accounts, not necessarily jumping onto the Instagram or the Facebook accounts that the rec department uses. Um, I don't know, I think the people who sign up for those do that for a reason because they like all the rec department stuff that comes along, but it's easy to create a separate one. Um, obviously, uh, whenever I put anything out on social media, like via next door, I always close off comments, things like that, too, because, uh, well, for 101 reasons, but I think you guys have already discussed, it's not a great exchange thing. Uh, I also think before you delve into there that, that you would need a, uh, a very clear social media policy, um, clearly vetted through legal as well, just because it is such a gray area and there's so many chances for uh, uh, non-compliance non and violations that are in there. Um, I, I am actually in agreement with the events and the events that were listed. I would just say those are good events for it. I don't necessarily think that our events that are more geared towards like the kids wouldn't be good. You know, Halloween, the Winterfest that's coming up, people are bringing their kids, they're with their kids. It's not really a venue for them to sit and talk, but music in the park, the wine event, especially because there's no kids, the auto show I think is a good one. Um, things like that I think would be good events and it's easy to set up a little table. Uh, as far as a community meeting, um, and I talked to you a little bit about this offline, Jeff, I think, um, you have large brown act concerns, and I, I, it would be very hard to properly set the expectations if you're saying, hey, let's have a town hall, come interact with your board. Um, you would have to do it in one of two ways. One, if you have a setting like this, it just becomes more of a giant public comment session because, again, you, you can't have a meeting like that and then discuss openly and exchange on non-agendized items, even in that setting. So maybe set up little tables with, you know, here's two board members over here, here's another board member over there, two others over there, and you have private interchange. I, I agree with you. I'm not wild about that idea either. And I think you get into a gray area there, but you do have some uh, notice and Brown Act and agenda concerns with community meetings of that session. So mm -hmm. I think if you do that, you just have to set the expectation of, hey, we're here to listen. And then you can always assign follow-up to, if people want follow-up conversation, great. Hey, please tell me how I get in touch with you and I will follow up with you offline later and then we can figure out to bring that back into a larger meeting or whatever the case may be. Um, and then finally, I'm just in kind of listening, and I know that this was the case for me when I first moved here, um, and a lot of times it's hard to kind of lose sight because at the end of the day we are a government agency, but I think a lot of people don't see us that way and 
really they were more of a service-based organization for this community, providing park recreation services, fire services, and then making sure street lights come on every night. Um, I don't think people think of us in the same way as like a city or a municipality that has a much broader range of authorities beyond those very distinct four areas. Mm -hmm. um, so I agree that uh, with your initial comment of just making sure that people are very aware of what the scope, charter, strategy, and priorities, I believe is exactly how you put it. Um, so those are just my two cents kind of going into it. I think the outreach is a good idea. I think the more you get people engaged, the better. Um, but I think, uh, you know, some of Isabella's points and, and points you made, Jeff, they get engaged on topics that are meaningful to them. Mm -hmm. um, and otherwise, they're kind of seeing us as less of an authoritative agency as a municipality or a city council in your case, and more as a service provider, uh, with only one of those, fire being an essential service. Uh, everything else is more of an, an elective <coughs> service, per se, with parks and rec and then street lights. Uh, you know, I mean, people with the first street lights go off forever too. So, uh, uh, and that's the, actually street light questions are what come to me most from the county because people automatically assume they go to the County Department of Public Works with their street light things and this, then Public Works bounces it off to me and then I circle back around with the person and everything else. So it's, uh, anyway, those are just my thoughts. Um, on, I'm not, I, I, I applaud the effort, I applaud the thoughts, I think it's great. I think the more people can understand what is happening here and how they can have potential to influence or even get involved uh, and help support it, uh, whatever certain initiative here is only helpful to the district as a whole. Um, but I just uh, feel I wouldn't be doing my part with you all where I'd say here's a couple of the risks inherent with what you're trying to do that has to be considered and uh, happiness to take. It sounds like social media was taking up a lot of steam, but that's the one that scares me the most in terms of having very, very clear policies, procedures in place that uh, has been fully better and signed off on through legal counsel. Thank you. So before I open it to the public, um, would it be totally out of place on my part to ask Jeff to pursue this further and uh, make it real in terms of uh, you know sign up um, create specific sign ups for events or um, for um, the coffee hour at the uh, Marinewood Market just um, Take, take the feedback and run with it. I think mm -hmm. that's pretty much what you're saying. Yeah, because right? you know, clearly what I'm hearing, and correct me if I'm wrong, is the thing that probably resonated the most is what I had hoped, and that is face-to-face -face contact. And um, even though it is extra hours, et cetera, et cetera, it gives us the opportunity to actually sit yeah. with community members if they're willing to do so. So yes, I think uh, obviously we can rotate that. You don't have to say, okay, you guys are going to do that in perpetuity. <laughs> but um, also, I'll, I'll think about some of these other things. Um, what Eric just said about social media, I think, does speak to the fact that we have another policy in front of us that we can be working on. <clears throat> so I think that would, you know, probably require some energy as well. So, um, you know. I'm looking to build. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a big social media user. <laughs> oh, yes. but, I, but yeah, I'm, um, I'm happy to move forward. Great. And I thank you all very much for your feedback. Thank you for the initiative and all the thoughts. And uh, we'll hear from the public now. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Um, so I like the words that I'm hearing. I, I, uh, uh, I'm a little confused by them. Uh, but, uh, but the, the ideas are good. Um, with regards to social media, I totally agree that that's a one-way medium. It should not be an exchange medium. There's a couple reasons for that. First of all, you don't know who you're talking with, right? Um, and second of all, I mean, it's just, it's, it's a toxic, it can be very toxic, and, and, and we all know that. Um, and, we all know that people don't represent themselves accurately. There really should be only um, either independent um, efforts by each one of you or uh, publish that letter, uh, that newsletter, on our website 
and use Instagram and everything else to point people back to the newsletter. Hey, there's a newsletter out, and everything focused through that. As far as content goes, there's lots of content. Um, a friend of mine who uh, was a council member in Sausalito did a newsletter by constant contact every month, and you know, here are the things you need to know, these are the issues coming up. Um, as far as a community-wide meeting, <coughs> I believe uh, an annual meeting uh, discussing some of the big issues and, and having a conversation is pretty much all you can hope for. One meeting a year, maybe two meetings a year. I understand you want to be out there meeting people. There's nothing wrong with that either. But um, I think if you want quality participation, quality dialogue, you really, you, you're going to need some sort of forum. And it, it could be, you know, Cities have state of the city addresses. Each one of you could do that and you could discuss these are the issues that we're looking at this year, these are the challenges, this is how we're going to meet the challenges. And I think that would be very positive and it would have an effect of uh, bringing people in. The other thing that you didn't mention tonight, Jeff, but you mentioned before is simply signage. People don't know that there's meetings going on. Um, so doing that is, is, is very positive. But I, I, I don't want to be insulting, but I, I, you know, especially hearing it from you, Jeff, I mean, I, I, I hear everything that you say, and I, I'm excited by it. But, you know, just using the interaction, the last public meeting that we had on the maintenance shed, you brought a bunch of people in. A lot of people had concerns. We had five. Uh, projects or, or suggestions that was completely ignored um, and you went a different direction with a bigger project um, when it was in the, the early stages of this we tried to engage you guys didn't want to engage and it just seems like you know you're saying one thing but you're actually doing everything against what you're t telling us that you want to have happen. So I guess I'm, I want to believe that the, the right thing is, first of all, I, I do believe that you have a positive vision for the community. I don't necessarily agree with it all, but, um, you know, engage. I, th I think if you do have a, a good conversation with people, we've got 6,000 people in this valley. There are a lot of smart people in this valley that care about their community and I um, uh, I, I guess I, I guess what I'd like to do is encourage you to to pursue it I'm certainly open for discussion on that um, but I actually don't think anyone who comes here from the public me or Linda or any of the people on quiet would you guys are really treating us very rudely and if you want people to to participate, you really have to to um, treat us at, with the kind of respect that you treat neighbors, and uh, and so um, I, that's that's all I have to say about the issue. Thank you, Stephen. Um, item G, two is the Board of District Manager report. Um, okay, uh, I gave you a report in there uh, this month. A lot of stuff we've been working on is in the packet and moving on with holidays and everything else. Uh, just a quick update on tax and interest and contract revenues uh, that I had put in there. Um, we have started to get some of our taxes trickling in as of uh, when I checked at the time I published this on Friday. Uh, we haven't gotten any of the large chunks that typically come in more closer to the middle or end of the month. Uh, that's our current secured as well as the special taxes, um, approximately 55% of that still to come in, um, which I think will be you know, somewhere around 1.75 million. Uh, we've received about 23,000 in various property taxes. I left a note in here about interest. Um, for Q1, we earned a little over $17,000 in interest based on an average daily cash balance of slightly over 3.1 million held in, the, in our general treasury fund. Um, and additionally, we earned a little over 1,500 interest uh, revenue in our Measure A <coughs> Treasury Fund uh, based on average daily cash balance of a little over 273,000. Uh, so that's just for quarter one. 
sort of tracking way well ahead of budget on that. Um, and then we also got our first 50% installment from the county for our contract with CSA 13, and that represents about 295,000. Uh, the remaining of that will come in in April and June in accordance with the contract. They actually are a little ahead of the game. We usually don't get that until January, so uh, um, I complain when they say, hey, we're gonna go ahead and do this transfer now. Um, and then I did send out um, invoices requesting payment for our other contract with the county for the county farm juvenile hall site um, to both the uh, county fire as well as the county office of ed who is uh, split about 90 10 um, between who pays what on that um, i added a few items of note uh, that i just to remind board members about you can see what they are in there but we have some items coming up uh, typical with the flip of the new year your annual form 700 uh, will be due um, announcements will come out i will forward them to all of you and then it's typical uh, throw those out either e-file them or if you are a hard copy person you can do that and uh, print it, sign it, give it to me, and I'm happy to turn it in, but that will come up next year, as well as some um, uh, reminders that were in the um, impromptu uh, board admin calendar that we put together, uh, just refreshing on the bylaws, ethics trainings and certificates. I will send out uh, uh, updates for people who have reached their two-year limit on that one. Yeah, I'm looking at you. Uh, so we'll get those done. <laughs> and then, uh, uh, I already covered that one. Uh, one other thing that's not in here that I meant to add um, that is starting to develop is, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with what used to be known as the Daphne property. This is the property that sits on the hillside along Lucas Valley Road, just behind the homes on Ellen Court. They are in Heron Court. Um, that prop the Daphne sold that property about a year ago to a group called Lafferty Communities. Um, they're the ones who came in and did all of that grading work that you see on the hillside down there. Uh, they are pushing forward with the development as it was approved by the county about 12 years ago. Um, and they actually are looking to move forward on that. I've, they've already been in touch with me. I've seen uh, some of their thoughts on it. It looks like 28 units, some with uh, additional uh, accessory dwelling units on it and some that will be at below market rate. I think there's six below market out of the 28 total parcels and then six also with uh, ADUs on additional dwelling units. So that should have some movement actually coming up. Uh, it's already been an approved master plan. They just will now going back into the uh, into that. Uh, it also includes some levels of uh, very small pockets of open space that they are thinking they would give to the district when that time comes. Uh, I'm sure I would advise against it um, and advise that they hold them themselves and the district doesn't accept these pockets of open space that are in there. Um, they're small. Um, they each look like maybe a half acre to an acre, but all the same, uh, I think we've learned our thoughts on holding open space. So. More will come on that as it comes, but I just thought it was interesting that after 11 or 12 years, this plan development might actually move along and another developer's come in and pop that property specifically to take on this master plan that was already approved. Okay. Is that why those cans are out there on uh, Lucas Valley Road? Cans? Cans. You know what a can is? No, that's your neighbor. <laughs> Literally, that's your neighbor. Good. <laughs> Carl, Carl, rock piles. Carl is building us. It is? Uh-huh. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you mentioned 28 units. 28, 28 parcels. Parcels. Yeah, 28 parcels, and I believe uh, 28 plus 6, so 34 total units would be out there. Okay. Six of them would have two units on the parcel. Uh, and these homes are looking at anywhere, the below market, I think he said were about 2,000, and the market rate homes are looking at 2,500 to 3,000 square feet. <clears throat> Any more questions from the board to Eric? Going once, going twice. Um, open to the public for comments. Uh, yeah, so um, I'm going to issue a trigger warning because uh, I'm still concerned that the only, you know, security at this meeting is more important than uh, safety inside this community during events that serve alcohol 
and um, we have youth running around. I've asked, um, and I, I'm going to apologize for this um, because uh, I spoke with someone uh, and they had uh, suggested that they, they would uh, back some sort of initiative to improve safety and we really haven't seen it. Um, what the, I'm talking about the uh, April incident and wanting a, uh, a video surveillance system Steve, in today's... Excuse me for interrupting, but this is the manager's report. The yeah, report. I, 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 I do understand this, but I am talking about what is the manager actually should be doing and hasn't addressed. Again, and this is not in his report. Therefore, it would be featured on, in the item not, not the on the agenda. That would be the right thing. Oh, so you don't want to discuss the the attempted rape of a young child who, who I, the, the, the issue that happened, she is scarred for life. I know other women who have been scarred for life for just the same sorts of incidents here. This is a very serious issue. This is a public safety issue. And the only thing you care about is having a policeman present to, to haul me off when you think I'm uh, acting out of, out of sorts so you can slam down your gavel on me. I am, I, this is a very important issue. I, I'm asking you to address it as soon as possible. I'm asking the, the general manager to make sure that the locks function here. I would like to see video surveillance. If, if the Novato... Manager's report. Still manager's okay. report. Okay. Are you going to deal with the safety issue? Because all of us have daughters, all of us have children. Okay, I, I, I. Um, Moving on to item H, which is the fire department matters. Um, Hi, Bob everybody. Hi. Uh, Bob Senate. Hi. I, I think I've done all of you. Are you an agenda item? Thanks. Uh, Are you an agenda item? I mean, you, you, you're coming up here to, to you know, intimidate yes. me. That's a whole purpose of your presence. This happens regularly. I'm pleased to be here. Uh, I've been the deputy chief for Sandra Fell for the past four and a half years. Prior to that, I worked for the city of Larkspur. I was the fire chief there for 22 years. I did 35 years total uh, with Larkspur. I started very early in life. I'm, I'm not as old as that sounds. If you do all those things, add up all the numbers, okay? Um, I love the fire service. I hope to continue in the fire service for many years to come. And, and I'm pleased to uh, uh, be in the role of uh, acting fire chief. Uh, chief Gray retired officially last Friday. It's a huge loss for the agency. He was obviously a great chief. So um, the city of San Rafael is presently in the recruitment mode uh, to hire the next chief. Uh, the application period is currently open and closes on December 27th, and I would imagine they'll have several very qualified, uh, very experienced applicants that will pursue this job. So I'm very excited to see who the next chief will be. Uh, just a few bullet points from the report that I submitted that's in your packet tonight. Uh, there's been some promotions. Uh, longtime fire captain Paul Bernard has been promoted from captain to the position of battalion chief and he began his new role on November 16th, so he serves as the Marinewood Battalion Chief as well on a shift. Um, that vacancy was created as um, longtime Battalion Chief Matt Windrum came off of uh, an operations assignment and went into a more administrative role. He's now the training in EMS BC, and again, that will directly benefit uh, the Marinewood Fire Department as well because he'll be overseeing the training and EMS functions for the two departments. Pleased to report that on November 14th, Marinewood firefighter Brian Smith was promoted to the position of engineer. Uh, it's also notable to report that uh, former Marinewood firefighter Esteban Cespedes, um, who now works for uh, San Rafael, was promoted to the position of fire engineer as well. Uh, on November 14th, uh, the department held the annual appreciation dinner and uh, reviewed the outstanding service uh, of the department's volunteer firefighters. Uh, Todd McLenathan was honored as the Ringwood Volunteer Firefighter of the Year. 
On November 19th, a combination grant opening of Fire Station 57, that's the facility right across from the Civic Center. Uh, coupled with the retirement recognition for, for Chief Gray was held, it was a well-attended event. Um, I would encourage you all to, to drive by that station, especially at night, it is gorgeous. Um, it's a true example of a partnership between the County of Marin, who owns the land, and the City of San Rafael, who owns the building. Uh, that serves the city of San Rafael, uh, backs up the community of Marinwood, uh, and also serves the CSA 19 areas as well, out the Santa Benicia Valley. Uh, the building, it's very interesting, um, had to go through a rigorous review process by the uh, Frank Lloyd Wright Commission. Uh, it needed to complement, yeah. but not copy, the architecture of the Civic Center, and I think that was quite a challenge for the architects, but I think they did a great job. Uh, drive by at night sometime, it's beautiful to look at it. It's night. pretty it, during the day, too. Yeah, it is. Um, I just hope the roof doesn't leak. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it seems like they always do. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, let's see. Uh, moving on, uh, in mid-November, Ridgewood Engine Company, uh, this was a notable event that we had. We had a, a fire inside a hangar out at the uh, San Rafael Airport. It was midday. Uh, Engine 58 was first on scene. Uh, did a great job, initial attack, uh, extinguished the fire. Uh, there were some uh, other pilots, club members uh, of that facility in the area who saw the fire, opened the hangar door, was able to get the plane out. Uh, the owner of that plane was not on site at the time, uh, so the plane was not damaged, fortunately. Um, un unfortunately, there was an illegal living unit inside the hangar, and uh, the fire started at that location. There was a lot of appliances, a lot of illegal extension cords, and properly installed electrical wiring and it was obvious that that's where the fire started. So um, fortunately, the, 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 uh, I was told at the time I was out there that you would not believe what's inside all those hangars, or there are many of them. I'm like, what are you talking about? Aren't they just planes? But I, apparently, there's other activities out there, which I don't think I want to know about. So, But uh, it was a fortunate outcome. There were no injuries. Uh, fire was confined to that area of origin. Uh, the hangar received some minor damage, but more importantly, the plane was saved. Um, Room also assisted with a townhouse fire. Um, this was over the Thanksgiving Day weekend. Uh, fairly serious event, two-story townhouse in the middle of, of a complex of eight townhouses, uh, fully involved upon our arrival. Uh, the sole occupant had gone out to walk his dog and left a candle burning in the living room and a pot boiling on the stove. Uh, went out and walked his dog, and it looks like uh, one of the cats knocked over a candle because that was where the area of origin was. Uh, the cats both perished. Uh, the unit was a complete loss, but fortunately, uh, the units on either side, which you would assume would have been damaged as well, uh, weren't. Mm -hmm. And so the occupants were able to reoccupy later that night, which was fortunate because it was a very cold night. It was the Thanksgiving weekend. Um, you know, some of the apartment and townhouse units have a lot of folks living in them, and you could potentially have a lot of people suddenly homeless that you're dealing with. And um, glad to say that wasn't the case. The uh, the occupant of the townhouse that was destroyed, he was the owner. Um, he has relatives in Nevada, so he was going to go stay with them. It's unfortunate about his cats, but. It could have been far, far worse. So we're really lucky that uh, it came out the way it, uh, it did. Um, at your last meeting, I believe Chief Gray mentioned the arrival of the AmeriCorps and Triple C team uh, that does vegetation management work uh, in many areas of uh, San Rafael. They also did some projects in Marinwood. And they're going to come back in the spring, and we have plans for them to do um, larger scale projects in Marinwood, in the parkland areas where they abut the residential areas to try and create more defensible space between the homes and the parkland. So we're very excited about that. And then the, uh, the call data is attached for your review. 
I believe that it's probably typical of prior months with a total of 108 calls. As always, the majority of those uh, were medical in nature, followed by uh, non-emergency public safety uh, service calls. Uh, but nothing really uh, out of the ordinary there. Um, and that concludes my report. I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you very much, Chief. Um, questions from the board? Are you going to apply? Um, I'd rather not say at this point. <laughs> We're nosy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, um, I um, scanned the Bob Murray and Associates site and uh -huh. noticed in that incredibly lengthy description of the uh, uh, job requirements that um, our community was mentioned. Um, do you foresee once um, the candidates have been identified, there'll be some sort of committee that interviews the candidates? Yes. Okay, will Marin Wood have a seat on that? Absolutely. Will they will. We will. Okay. I was just curious yeah. about that. Probably one of our safety employees, I really hope. Um, no? I'm not really sure. Mm -hmm. We can certainly talk about that mm -hmm. and identify the most appropriate person, whether it's a board member or a commissioner mm -hmm. uh, or um, an employee. Okay. Just, or just curious. Just a manager. You know, my yeah. job to be nosy. No, no. I'm glad you asked the question. <laughs> it's important. Yes, indeed. When they had their recent uh, promotional process for their battalion chief, uh, Paul Bernard, who Chief Senate just talked about, they mm -hmm. actually uh, asked me and invited me to sit in on one of their panels oh, okay, for great. that. So uh, they've been good at uh, including us and the fact that if you even mentioned it all, that I would be surprised if uh, a similar request would have come down to pipe when Good to know. I'll make sure it does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Anybody else? Thank you for joining us. All right. Um, anything from Steve to Mr. Chief? Uh, yes, Chief. Well, and uh, don't uh, let people uh, judge me for you. If you don't, you know what I mean. Let's, I, uh, I expect to listen to you, and hopefully you listen to me. And I had good relationship with Chris Gray, as if you ever talked with him, and. Um, I respect your service, and I, I know that you come well qualified to the position. I also believe that we're a client of yours rather than a full full branch of, of your service. So we, there's stuff that we need to figure out locally, and um, well, hopefully who, whoever that chief is will you know have proper vision and see opportunity. So thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Well, before you move on, if you don't mind, um, just to, as far as Chief Senate, um, and again in this setting, just thanking him again for his willingness to assume this role. Um, I would say that uh, since well before we even got into this Chief Services Agreement, Chief Senate was very visible around Marin Wood. He was uh, very participatory, and uh, after the agreement has been even more so, he's in our admin office uh, probably once or twice a week, um, and I just from my perspective, it's very calming as part of this transition to know that Chief Senate was willing to play this role. So I personally don't envision, from an administrative perspective, any level of difference whatsoever. I mean, we have, we're already moving forward with everything else, and mm -hmm. I don't want to speak for Chief Brackett or any of the firefighters, but uh, my understanding is they all feel the same. So this is a, a good opportunity to have with Chief Senate uh, playing this role, and there will be a nice article uh, about him and his willingness to do this and tomorrow's IJ because I saw it on the online version of the night. So uh, nice I'm very right up about his playing a interim fire chief. So thank you. Thank you. Very you well. Thank you very much, Chief. Thank you everybody. Thank you. And we'll see you at the fire commission. Absolutely. Okay. Of course. Thank you for um, the date of the next fire commission meeting is January seventh. Um, park and recreation matters are next, um, with item with the first item being draft minutes of the Park and Recreation Commission meeting of November 26th. Uh, the board is to review the minutes. Are there any questions or comments from the board? No comments. Are there any questions or comments from the public? Hearing none. Moving to item two, which is the 2020 proposed summer camp and pool rates. Um, right. The board Excuse is me. asked to approve. Are you going to go over the minutes for the special meeting? 
Is that part of the packet? I'm not sure that it is. Um, so the pull rates, uh, would you like to present that? Um, yes, and I have a handout, just something that wasn't going to get included in the, um, the packet. So um, starting with uh, summer camp, um, we're proposing a 5%. This, what you're looking at right now is the pool, so I'll start with what's in the, the packet, um, which is the summer camp. Um, rates and we're uh, proposing a 5% or recommending a 5% increase in our summer camp fees. Um, I've included uh, a comparison just with some of our um, nearby camp programs um, that we are somewhat comparable. There's not really any one that is uh, quite the same as Marine or the program that we're offering, but this kind of gives you an, an idea of what the other rates are um, in Marin. And we did uh, just the different resident, non-resident drop-ins, and then um, breaking that down to sort of a price per hour, what value uh, uh, think parents are getting from, from the camp program. And I've shown on the top line Marin Woods rate in 2019 for summer camp, and then what these 5% increase would look like for those um, prices. Uh, the impetus for this is um, partly to keep up with our uh, continuing rise in our um, minimum wage is going to go up another 8% in 2020, as well as just um, other increases with field trip costs and supplies and just staying uh, competitive. And so we think this would um, be sufficient to put us in a, a good position to cover those costs and stay competitive with um, other programs. Luke, do I understand that the um, other municipalities' rates are their current rates as opposed to possibly going up as well? Uh, that's correct. So at this time, a lot of people are, uh, a lot of our colleagues in the other agencies are going through similar, um, you know, getting things approved or not. Uh, I don't foresee, most of the agencies in here do not suspect that the rates will increase, but a couple of them may go up a, a couple percent. Oh, I see. Uh, okay. Yeah. So um, these are fairly accurate with maybe a slight increase, but nothing drastic. Yeah. I think the city of San Rafael might do a big, a bigger overhaul. Their rates don't change very frequently, so when they do, they, they do a, a jump. So I think in 2021, the, the position for that is what it's going to be. So. Actually, before we proceed, I have a technical question. Can we break up the vote and do first the, the um, camp and then the pool? Would that be OK with everybody? Yeah. Yes? Sure. OK. So. Um, since <coughs> this seems to be oh, I just had a quick question. Clear, yeah, yeah. Nevada, is that a half day? Um, Nevada's is, um, I'd have to double check. I think their hours are just shorter um, than ours because of the, the, the. I mean, this is like on average. Yeah, like I said, a lot of these programs are, are different. Not all of them are a, a full day program with the same um, sort of activities. And so I, I, it's not exactly the same. Um, I'd have to get back to the organization. All right, yeah, I was curious. Any more questions from the board? Any comments or feedback? Is this summer camp? That's summer camp exclusively for now, yes. So, mm -hmm. no, I personally um, would like to advocate for a greater differentiation between the resident and non-resident rates just because residents do support the uh, community via taxes already and I do know that you offer the advanced registration to residents and that's a huge benefit that I'm sure every parent in the uh, in the area appreciates. Um, however, currently it's only $35 um, difference between the resident and non-resident and um, given how much in demand our camps are, I think that there is a greater opportunity cost. Oh, uh, uh, I'm sorry, greater opportunity, here we go. For revenue. 
that's my personal feedback. But um, I'm the only one, I guess. Yeah, I think that with what I've seen Novato and Sanibel, when I sign up the kids for classes, there's usually more than a $35 gap. So um, I would support. Oh, well. just to answer the other the as far as the, the camps go, we do have one of the only programs that actually does differentiate resident and non-resident for the summer camps. Um, just, just to put that out there. So yeah, I think maybe with classes there's a discrepancy with them, but. Um, okay, because like classes usually it's like 40, sometimes $50, <laughs> and that's just for a week. Right. So, yeah. so before I open it to, uh, for public comment, can I have a motion to approve the rates? I'd like to make one comment before we do that. Sure. Um, as far as I can, as far as I recall, and this again goes back a number of years, I think our um, park and recreation staff has done an admirable job of balancing the fees for our programs and the numbers of people that we um, we attract. And I think uh, I just think they do a great job. So. I'm real happy with what you proposed. Do I hear a motion? A motion to the turn of the teams on Wait. As presented? As presented. Yeah. As presented. Thank you. Thank you. Um, comments from the public? Yes, I uh, appreciate your comments, Isabella, on the price differentiation. I, I like the fact that uh, things are moving in the right direction and um, I think your points about managing demand is really important but also um, recognizing the fact that people are paying taxes in this district. I'd like to uh, offer a, a, an idea that I think might work is to offer like a Marinwood discount card, I don't know if such things exist, where someone from outside the community could purchase a membership, like a pool membership, maybe it could be a pool membership, where they would earn the uh, residence rates. Um, I think this would drive more revenue. Um, uh, and so I do have some comments on the pool rates, but I'll wait for that. But, uh, uh, you know, good effort. Uh, ob obviously, we have a successful program. They, uh, each time we do, do these programs, it seems to be oversubscribed. And it's really more of a matter of managing demand and um, uh, just meeting the needs of the community. So, thanks. Thank you. Um, so, I'll call the question. All in favor? Uh, aye. I'm moving on to the pool race. Great. Uh, thank you. Uh, for the pool, we're proposing uh, a 3% increase for the pool membership rates and no change to the drop in. Uh, or the five swim punch card um, rates. We changed that last, I believe, in 2017, and um, the those rates are just ones we kind of wait to go up a dollar, and it's, it's a, that's kind of a big jump at this point, and we think those are kind of right, right where they need to be in terms of our uh, drop in revenue and, and attendance. Um, and then memberships going up 3% is just, again, to keep up with uh, the rising cost of staffing as, as minimum wage goes up um, and just expenses in general. And um, so I, I've put a chart together with our a comparison between the other pools in the area um, with all of the, the rates. And then I, I included just the family membership rate, which is sort of a base, uh, the family of four is it's most comparable. And then the other memberships at these other agencies are like a, a percentage less than the family membership, generally speaking. Um, and then at the bottom, it shows the difference between our existing 2019 pool rates and then what we're proposing with the uh, increase for 2020. The handout that I gave you a few minutes ago shows you what each of those membership rates for, would look like um, with the 3% increase. So it breaks it down at the bottom, uh, which was not included in your packet. So um, if anyone has any questions, please let me know. Thank you. Let's start from I, uh, I think it's fine. I, there's no reason to raise the drop-in or punch pass. Um, at this time, uh, 
looking at what how people take advantage of those, um, the I think our, our rates are, are pretty competitive. Um, when you know ten dollars for, for use of the pool for an hour is it just um, seems pretty steep for for coming in. And so we look at. Uh, who's taking advantage of the drop-in rate? Most people take advantage of the punch card that are not members. Um, and, and then the people that end up buying a few punch cards do tend to, to transition to pool members. And we're seeing like a nice funneling of drop-ins to punch cards to, to memberships. And um, it, it seems to be to be working uh, in that way. And our memberships have only gotten more popular in the last few years. Um, and not just as a result of the discounts that, that come with um, purchasing a membership for right. you know, camps and whatnot. It's fine, and we're in line with our over the hill tarot workers. Exactly. Okay. Anybody else? I mean, I, I get, I get what you say. It doesn't mean that I love the fact that the membership rates go up and everybody else is the same. I just, I, like, no, I understand I, I, you. Yeah. I just, as a value, I'm paying the membership. I just. Right, right. <laughs> Still the best value. I know. So, you know, I, know. Yeah. I have a curiosity question. Mm -hmm. um, and looking at the uh, the punch passes for the other organizations, they seem to have them in denominations of 15 visits and 20 visits, and we have five. Is there a reason for that? Um, yes. And we've talked about this a lot over the years, um, mm -hmm. wondering if we should add more options, if we should change that. Um, what really, uh, I think if we did raise the uh, number of punches on the pass, we would see a drop in uh, commitments to the membership. It would be a, you know, this so is more this for, is a lead in. Right. And, um, and so people that you know, rack up a, you know, enough punch cards end up saying, oh, you know what, I could be saving money if I got the membership. We want the, me the memberships are, you know, well, our, our preference. Sure. Um, so we have not seen any reason to, to make that jump. It just seems mm -hmm. like it would just it would limit that. And, and, give enough people more excuses not to join. Mm -hmm. And you've seen a pretty good um, impact of buying the punch packs and then converting them to Absolutely. You can measure that because we you know we the the last numbers are so regular. We get to know them so well as as you know. Um, that uh, and it's season to season and you say, oh you you're getting a membership card this year. There's someone that's been a punch card holder for you know the last season or two or something like that. So um, I think it really does give people a chance to try out the pool, and and then they, they realize, oh, this is what I want to do. They do it and pursue the membership. Yeah. It's, a, it's a pretty measurable trend. So. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? I'm going to chime in again with the same song. I apologize. My stepfather is in the hospital, and that's why I'm looking on my with my phone right now. Um, so uh, my song will be the same one. Um, uh, I believe that um, the residents are actually at this disadvantage here. Um, I like playing with numbers, and I was analyzing the variances between, you know, resident, non-resident, um, our poll versus other poll. Um, right now, the season rate for 2020, the proposed one, the uh, variance between the uh, resident and non-resident is only 25%. Um, and um, we are de facto the cheapest non-resident membership in the county. Um, if we were to apply our rates, um, <coughs> or our length of the week basically, the 28th week um, at Hamilton uh, would be $470. Um, and um, if we were to keep the 50% differential between like uh, drop-in and membership. Um, basically, that our our membership could easily for non-residents could be easily close to five hundred dollars. When you follow the logic and the differentials, kind of of you know forty percent um, of resident non-resident. Um, yeah. And I do know that historically, our residents do not support the pool enough for it to be sustainable, and I do realize that we rely on outside uh, um, visitors or members to, to support the operations. Um, but I do think that we have some opportunity here as well. But yeah, um, I, I, do, I do also respect your experience with it, and you've been running this shop quite successfully for quite some time. Um, that's just my two cents on, you know, when I think we could be edging 
Yeah, I think that's tr that's true. If you don't, if you don't mind me speaking, like, I, I think that's um, that's definitely true. There might be some room to 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 increase that gap. Um, one thing that with all these other pools that are of comparable size, offering similar hours in the area, you know, Hamilton and Terrell being the main the main ones, um, we if we get people here committing to the pool, whether they're lab swimmers or coming on the weekends for, for family. Uh, what we do often see is now these people are joining our swim lesson program. They may are getting exposed to our, our classes and our camps. And it's just, um, it sometimes is like the gateway for them to become uh, marine with families. And that's one thing that our, um, when people live within a quick drive to any of these three main pools and in a, in a, in a few others, um, sometimes price is the determining factor in which one they choose to, to commit to for the season. And so that's one thing where we're just like wanting to be very careful and, um, you know, if, if we can get them in because our price is, is more competitive, we may get them in all these other areas, which um, some of these other pools don't have as many programs that we can, you know, latch on them for. So we see the pool as a, a valuable asset in just bringing people into the building and we've got a lot of the programs, you know, being marketed and they see the camps and they see the classes and things. So that's one that we do consider and, and while we're, we're just, we navigate that very carefully just to make sure we're not losing some of these people in these other pools that are offering a very similar program. Mm -hmm. I do agree with that though. I mean, I didn't hang out here early in the day this last summer, but in the previous summers when I was here with the girls, um, there's a lot of people who come in from the city. And I don't know if they're doing punch cards or doing drop-in, but they've repeatedly said that it's a really nice pool, but it's also the cheapest rates. And that's why they come here. Um, and clearly, we could take them all the way into the city. Yeah. But, go ahead. Yeah. So every year we have this conversation. Every year I'm looking at the clock going, oh my god, why, why, why is the board okay. getting into the nitty gritty? Three to five percent every year increase. Trust you guys, you're paying attention to it. I, I just remember there was one year where an increase failed because a board member had a personal objection to it, and I thought that that was doing a disservice to the community. And that, yeah, we just have to kind of keep, yeah. keep plugging at it and do what's reasonable. And, can't get it perfect every time, but I mean, it's weighing a lot of things, and I think you're doing a good job of it. Because, um, yeah, there's no way to please everybody, but the steady increase in paying attention to the neighboring agencies, I think, is, you know, here I am. So I'm in favor um, of the proposal as presented and would like to propose. Can I make a motion? Okay, so I'll make a motion to increase the pool rates for 3% as proposed for uh, summer for, for 2020. Second. And I'll open it to the public. Sure. So I think, um, first of all, I'm, I'm glad that the price is moving in the right direction. I, uh, I think Isabella, again, has some good uh, points in terms of, you know, is our pricing structure accurate? I, without commenting specifically on what she said, I, I, I really want to focus on one area. I'm a lap swimmer. I know Jeff is a lap swimmer. He swims in the morning. I swim at noon. And one of the issues we have during that time is a lot of drop-ins from the local offices. And us residents get basically booted out of the pool um, because of the heavy use uh, by the office workers. In the past, this punch pass not only has been the cheapest option, it's been heavily discounted. And um, I think the punch pass is fine. I think when you start discounting it and you know cutting it in half or whatever it is, I, I remember the arguments, oh, people don't use all their punch passes. Well, if this is true, then we need to limit uh, punch passes to the recreational times, not to lap swimming times. I'm a lap swimmer. I, Currently, I'm a member of the Y, um, and it's a $15 drop-in rate. So, you know, the markets are different. There's different, you know, price pricing appropriate for different markets. Um, so, I, so I would say if there needs to be some kind of limitation, the board needs to set it. How many um, punch passes? Uh, uh, discounts you're going to use to promote, uh, if at all, and uh, also seriously consider the effects 
when you have too many people using too cheap of rates and crowding the pool, it just basically destroys the experience for everybody. So I, I, I don't think we've quite figured out the pricing. Um, and then secondly, uh, as I do swim in a number of pools, we do have probably the most guarded pools there are, and it seems like maybe staffing uh, levels should be modified um, to be more in line with what other pools have. So um, if you want to boost, boost the profits, those are a couple suggestions. Limit the discounts on the on the cheap seat, the, the cost pass, and uh, watch the expenses. I just speak to one of those mm -hmm. and clarify something. <clears throat> um, so we have not uh, run any discounted uh, punch cards since 2016. Um, okay, good. And uh, we don't allow any drop-ins during laps one hours. So uh, perfect. Thank you. And so I'll call the questions. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> it has nothing to do with pool rates. So, yes. Okay. Do you have any a feel, if no statistics, uh, for the impact of the Lucas Valley pool being closed last year and again it will be this year? You know, only uh, anecdotal in terms of I can see a couple new families that would actually speak to the fact that they're complaining that their pool's closed, mm -hmm. but uh, it wasn't a noticeable, um, I didn't see a huge jump in, in people using the lap lanes or coming at rec swimming, it wasn't something that you could say, oh, it seems like, mm -hmm. um, back when Hamilton was closed when they redid that, it was a very noticeable influx of, of families and, and people. The Lucas Valley Pool, I, I just don't think, um, the you know, are not there. and the numbers of dedicated swimmers that need a pool, right. if they don't have one, you know, mm -hmm. across the street, that, we just didn't really notice it. Well, they know, used, so. didn't they use the yeah. chair and the pool? For, for their swim teams. Swim teams. I think yeah. that people went there because yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's where. That's I entirely know, possible. I'm, I'm, so sorry. I'm sorry, I'll never say it again. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> you can tell me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could have been talking about a couple of times. <laughs> um, Alrighty, so um, we approve the rates, we approve the uh, Item 3, Recreation and Park Maintenance Activity Report, and we did read the report. Thank you for always preparing it. So. Just a, I just have a, one or two things I might uh, just point out if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, so we were able to uh, fill the vacant maintenance worker two position. Um, this uh, about, uh, well last week, our new maintenance two worker, Callum Reed, uh, started his first day on uh, last Monday. Um, so far so good. Uh, it's, he's been integrating the team uh, really well and we're really happy to have him and we're really happy to have a uh, somewhat whole uh, uh, team once again. So uh, we miss Victor, but it's nice to, to have another um, other worker working with him right now. Very good. Um, and I think that was the main thing I just wanted to point out to you. Thank you. Any questions from the board? No. Nope. So, thank you. And, and I'm sorry, um, public comment? This is on the park and rec. This is for uh, recreation and park maintenance activity report. So, okay, so for both then. Okay, so, um, yeah, uh, it, this is kind of difficult to say again, but uh, we don't have adequate safety improvements. The, the Novato is partnering with Amazon to get all the video doorbells to have a surveillance network. And we don't even have a surveillance network here in this, or a surveillance um, video in here. Uh, we, so I, I honestly, um, you talk about public engagement, you've received respectful dialogue on this issue, and yet, you have stonewalled and chosen not to, to listen to it. The other issue is with regards to the maintenance. It's very sad to me to see how poorly our, our, the, the landscape is treated 
in uh, along the nature trail. Um, just today, I, you know, we've got tire tracks all in, up, up in the, uh, not on the road, but uh, new roads in, in the meadow. And there's really no reason for that. We don't have that much acreage. We can take, we can have higher standards of care. And I don't know with uh, three well-paid uh, staff and a manager why uh, uh, a standard of care that is common at uh, uh, other parks uh, can't be adhered to. It's, uh, it's more than planting. Uh, flowers next to the the, uh, uh, the community center. It's, it, we we have a lot of open space. We have a lot of space here, and all of it is enjoyed by our community. So um, until it changes, I, I'm afraid I'm I'm afraid that, that I, I I really think that there's really not a, a full effort made. Uh, in, in terms of maintenance and care of our park. Thank you. The date of the next Park and Recreation Commission meeting is January 28, 2020. And so we move to new and other business. Um, January 28th, uh, the commission usually does not meet the, you know, a couple of days before New Year's Eve. Christmas Eve. So. Christmas Eve. Yes, the, fourth, the fourth Tuesday would be Christmas Eve. Okay. Yeah. Oh, what a break. Exactly. Look at that eggnog. What do you mean? I'm going to do my shop. So, new and other business is the election of uh, board officers for 2020, the president and the vice president. And I am going to start this conversation by nominating Jeff to be the president for 2020. That is my motion. Would you be willing to serve as that? I'm speechless. <laughs> uh, let's have a second. Before she second. Goes. Thank you. Um, would you be willing to serve? If I get drafted, I'll serve. Fantastic. Um, I don't know. I'll, okay. I'll nominate as well, Vice President. Mm -hmm. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, sir, it's not going to be against you. But let's, uh, should we be the President first? Okay, yeah. sorry. I'll, I'll, I'll withdraw that for now. Okay. Um, so we have a motion, we have a second. Um, public comment? Uh, to be a leader, you need followers. I like what Jeff has said. Uh, following through is uh, on those sentiments is vital uh, for his acceptance as leader of the community. So let's be quick. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Yay. <laughs> Congratulations. So much enthusiasm. <laughs> 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 And I, I do know that you all serve the community splendidly because you have done so in years past. So now we're just getting the title that you so rightfully deserve, in my uh, opinion. Well, isn't it true that the president shouldn't say anything except for calling me the order and announcing the agenda items? It sounds like a break to me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, having elected the president, the vice president would be the next. Is anybody else wearing angle? I know you're wearing a lot of hats. I have a lot of hats. So Maybe next year I would be willing to be an elected as an advice, but I just I'm currently also running the home and school club at Thomas Valley and a couple of other things that I don't know. Like, so uh, I really can't do this because then I wouldn't do what the advice needs to do. All right. So I'll make a motion that we uh, nominate Bill Shea to be the Vice President next year. Thank you. Okay. Um, public comment? Dudes and chicks. No, Bill's a good guy. I'm glad you approved. Same, same, same comments. Uh, 
you know, to be a leader, you need followers. And uh, I, I like the fact that you guys are talking about outreach. I think that's really vital to the health of this board and uh, the legitimacy of your decision making. Thank you. I'm not even going to ask if you're willing to serve. <laughs> it wouldn't matter anyway. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you so much. And Jeff, you have a six-month hiatus plan for the summer. <laughs> 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 just looked. <laughs> um, That's the USS name. Right? That's right. <laughs> yes. yeah. And so we move to the board member items of interest and request for future agenda items. I just wanted to say thank you to John Toon for all his service as a Commissioner, he's stepping down, and he definitely, right? What? No, John, no. No. Don't give me hard. No. I thought he. Shane down. Shane down time. Okay. Okay, I thought he was also stepping down. Just Shane is, is stepping down. Okay. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to the physical so take take away the, the oopsie and just say Chris Shane uh, Valentine. I um, wanted to thank him for his service and for the time that he put in helping out the district. Yeah. Anything else from the board? I want to pass this out. Okay, this is the um, a little bit in arrears because there was no mirror meeting uh, last month due to the lack of agenda items, and they're more than making up for it tomorrow. Um, but for all intents and purposes, um, the draft. Um, subsequent environmental impact report was presented at the Marin County um, Civic Center on October 21st. There was virtually, I think, one member of the public that showed up for that meeting and there was no comment. Um, the meetings, uh, or the, actually it was before that, the 21st is when the public comment, written comments were uh, closed. Um, we will find out a little bit more about that at tomorrow's meeting, but for all intents and purposes, it looks like we're ready to move forward with the final um, SEIR. Um, there's also audit and financial statements that will be done through tomorrow, and the um, option eight, which was the uh, MPLS to provide, you know, number one, superior troubleshooting of the lines when uh, the next gen system goes up and also some sort of video so that people can actually look and see what's going on at a site and what might be the problem um, was approved and the only thing that they're dealing with right now is to whether a support program will be part of the initial installment payment but um, they're moving right along a little bit slowly but they are making progress so just wanted to let you know and again, the next meeting is tomorrow at 3.30 in the Nevada Fire Department offices. Thank you very much for the update, John. Mm -hmm. Anything else from the board? Um, anything from the public? Yeah, question. The, the draft EIR doesn't say what it's for. What, what, what is, is this for, for towers? What, what are This they? is the next gen system that's going to replace the current system. There are changes in towers. Some towers are being, or sites. So this say. is for all the sites? Some yeah. sites will be retired. Some sites will be added. There'll be new radios, new frequencies, et cetera, et cetera. OK, so no, no I, I get that. But usually it's, it's construction related. Yes. And what you're saying, OK, so OK, so this is for all the construction, all the, the sites across the county, one SEIR for everything. Yeah, some modifications to existing sites and others that will be constructed. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Next month's agenda. Um, Jeff, we'll get the exercises first. Executive power. I'll have uh, the annual commission liaison appointments as well as the LAPCO liaison appointment on the agenda. Um, so, any changes in there? Excuse me, I'm going to have to talk to you about more. Huh? You got it. And Too late. <laughs> Already. Um, motion to adjourn, please. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
Thank you very much.